This is the Youth Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumble, day 283. Today we're talking about joy and how we can find joy in a relationship with God. So, how do we find joy in telling others about Jesus? And how do we find joy in the Bible? Well, let's look into our passages and see the true joy that comes from knowing Jesus today. Surprised by joy is how C.S. Lewis described his conversion from atheism to faith in Jesus Christ. He never expected that there was any connection between God and joy. If anything, he thought it would be the opposite. For all I knew, the total rejection of what I called joy might be one of the demands. Convinced that it was true, Lewis admitted that God was God. At that moment, he was the most dejected and reluctant convert in all England. To his great surprise, he found that following Jesus was the very opposite of what he expected. He experienced great joy through his newfound faith. He discovered that the heart of reality is to be found in a person. He was surprised by joy. Many people confuse pleasure, contentment and joy. Pleasure can come from a good holiday, a pay rise or a bar of chocolate. People can become pleasure addicts, always seeking the next fix. But these experiences of pleasure come and go. Contentment is longer term, being satisfied with your life, your home, your job and your relationships. But there is another kind of happiness that we call joy. It's not a fleeting emotion, but a deep way of being, a state of mind that is available to everybody. It's not found in things, but in a person. From Psalm 119 How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Joy in studying the Bible. Neither Pippa nor I have a very good sense of direction. We often get lost on car journeys, even with a sat nav or Google Maps. There is great joy when we find someone who is able to give us good directions. The Bible gives you the best directions for life. It helps you to avoid straying and getting lost. There is such great joy in finding directions to abundant life. Reading the Bible is the last place in the world that most people would expect to find joy. Yet, as the psalmist points out, God's wisdom and his promises are a source of delight, rejoicing and great riches. He writes, I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I delight in your decrees. In the Bible, we find the path to purity. How can the young keep their way pure by living according to your word. He writes, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Learn verses, meditate on them and speak them out. These are some of the ways in which you can avoid straying and getting lost. As you sense the Holy Spirit speaking to you through a particular verse or passage, you are able to say with the second century church father Origen, this is my scripture. You have the joy of hearing God's voice and rejoicing in following his statutes. Lord, thank you that your words bring me such joy. Help me to hide your words in my heart and to recount them with my lips. New Testament from 1 Thessalonians 2 and 3 For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes. Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service in spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. But Timothy has just now come to us from you, 
and has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. For now we really live, since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. Joy in leading others to faith in Jesus Paul had led the Thessalonians to encounter Jesus Christ. There is great joy in seeing people come to faith in Christ. I think this is one of the reasons people love to help on Alpha. They have the joy of seeing people come to Christ, being filled with the Spirit and getting excited about Jesus. The Thessalonians were Paul's pride and joy. There was such a close bond with them. He had an intense longing to see them. He writes, For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes? Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. Rewards are not wrong in principle, and seeing others put their faith in Jesus is a great reward, crown. How different is our glory from that of the world. The world glories in money, success and power, but we glory in Jesus and in those we have been privileged to see drawn to him through our words and our prayers. Paul's joy had nothing to do with his circumstances. He was in the middle of trouble and hard times, stress and crushing difficulties. Paul's concern, amazingly, was not about his own situation, but about the effect the trials and persecution might have on the faith of the Thessalonians. Paul's joy came from their joy. It really is true that the secret of happiness is making someone else happy. Paul writes, For now we really live, since you are standing firm in the Lord. His quality of life is deeply affected by the relationship that they have with the Lord. He's filled with joy. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? This joy flowed out of the depth of relationship that Paul had with the Thessalonians. His love and concern for them is so clear. That love and concern continued after he left. He longed to return to them, sent Timothy to help them even though it meant his being alone for a while, and prayed most earnestly for them, night and day. Committing deeply to the lives of those around you may seem daunting, and it may involve hard work. Yet, as Paul's example shows, it is also a source of joy and celebration. It was joy in the presence of God. As Paul was praying, his heart must have been filled with joy as he thought about them. So much of Paul's letters are filled with thanksgiving and joy. As we enter God's presence, our hearts are unburdened and we see things as God sees them. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Lord, thank you so much for the joy of seeing people come to Christ. May I increase and overflow with love and be infused with strength and purity, filled with confidence in the presence of God, our Father. Old Testament from Jeremiah 21 to 23. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous Saviour. Joy in the friendship of Jesus. As you stay close to Jesus, his joy flows into you and your joy is complete. As Professor Gordon Fee writes, 
unmitigated, untrammeled joy is, or at least should be, the distinctive mark of the believer in Christ Jesus. The righteous branch, which Jeremiah speaks about in this passage, is going to be the source of complete joy. The Lord says to his people through Jeremiah, I am setting before you the way of life and the way of death. He calls them to administer justice. He says, attend to matters of justice. Set things right between people. Rescue victims from their exploiters. Don't take advantage of the homeless, the orphans, the widows. Stop the murdering. The kings should have acted like Josiah. He defended the cause of the poor and needy, and so all went well. Is that not what it means to know me, declares the Lord? Here we see God's concerns, both then and now. He's concerned about justice, about the poor and the homeless, about widows and orphans, about victims of injustice. How we treat the marginalised in our society matters to God. The people of God were under his judgment for failing in these areas. They had become an evil regime. They were about to go into exile. Yet in the midst of these prophecies of doom and exile, there was a ray of hope. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteousness. Through the lens of the New Testament, we see how Jesus fulfilled this prophecy about the righteous branch. He was descended from David, King of the Jews, a saviour, the Lord, our righteousness. Jesus is the one in whom we find complete joy. He is the righteous branch out of which every other branch should come. The righteous branch is linked to a vine. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Lord, thank you for the joy that comes from being close to Jesus. Help me each day to stay close to the righteous branch so that the joy of Jesus may be in me and my joy may be complete. Pepper adds, In Psalm 119 verse 11, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. It is wonderful when the right verse comes to mind in a particular situation. I wish I had learnt more verses when my memory worked better. Now the only way I can learn verses is when they appear in a song that we sing over and over again. The children's songs are the best. Let's pray. Lord, today I ask for joy. Lord, I sit in your presence and receive your Holy Spirit filled with joy today.